going to do a quick uh, video on a power up, power down dump trailer and hooking a uh, winch controller up to it. Uh, so how these work, you've got a, about a 100 amp hour uh, deep cycle battery here, a uh, pump motor and a big solenoid that controls it with uh, the control wire for the solenoid there. Well, that's the battery wire and that goes to the brushes and the motor so whenever that has positive power it energizes the pump motor itself and then you've got two electromagnetic solenoids so this one with the valve on top is the down solenoid so it's powered down so when this slug with the blue wire gets positive power and the motor's running it will uh, uh, run the bed down and this green wire when it gets positive from this uh, remote it trips this valve and directs the hydraulic fluid to the extend side of the cylinder so a person can drop the trailer by loosening this thumb valve here and letting it gravity uh, push fluid back uh, into the tank that'll leave uh, normally the pump would be running it would be pumping hydraulic fluid into the other side of the cylinder so if you gravity feed it down or if the battery is low enough where the pump isn't moving fluid enough fast enough to keep up with the, the ram coming down you'll end up with there should be hydraulic fluid in both sides of the cylinder the extend and retract side of the cylinder all the time but if you let it gravity down uh, it won't fill the one side of the cylinder and so you'll end up with a lot more hydraulic fluid in the reservoir and it might overflow. So then the issue with hooking a winch controller on one of these is to extend. I've got to get positive power to this lug and to this lug over here. And to get it to retract, I've got to get positive power to this lug and to that lug. And uh, obviously those have to be isolated. Um, so you don't trip both relays. So a person could do that either with uh, relays, you know, like a double pull, double throw relay, so that when uh, um, up is activated or whatever, it would send power to those two locations, but then when it's deactivated or open circuit, that it would uh, isolate those two. Uh, I'm going to do it solid state with a couple of... Uh, uh, 20 amp capacity diodes and I'll uh, kind of show you that. So this is a little Stegadon uh, wireless winch remote I got off of uh, eBay I think. Mainly I chose it because it had two remotes that have an on off switch on them which is nice so if you put it in your pocket you're not accidentally going to uh, extend the hoist. And I've just got a little lithium polymer battery hooked up to it along with a uh, test light for demonstration. So uh, the blue wire is just an antenna, negative and positive of course. Um, white, I've labeled these retract and extend because I plan to put a hydraulic jack on that and it just uh, makes it easier to know which way goes which way when the same motor will run the, the bed and the jack. But anyway, you can see if I hit retract I get positive power to the white wire and uh, well I probably don't need to show it but uh, same deal if we hit retract we get positive power to the yellow wire and then these are 20 amp diodes so if I take my test light here and uh, you can see lights up that way and if I turn it around, it doesn't. So the idea is going to be, I'm going to strip a section of this wire, solder in that diode, and a longer piece of white wire. And then the same thing with this uh, yellow wire, I'll clip it off, solder it to this diode, and another piece of yellow wire, and I'll heat shrink up over the body of the diode, the yellow wire coming out on both 
bands, then uh, the other ends of the diode here will get joined together and I'm going to use uh, blue wire uh, soldered to that and then heat shrink the whole thing. So basically I'll have uh, the white wire will be my to the retract solenoid, the yellow wire will be to the uh, extend or raise solenoid and the blue wire then will go to uh, control the motor relay and uh, that should give me remote control there for the trailer. As far as the rest of the wiring I'm going to use a little uh, you know, typical inline fuse. I always like to protect uh, any circuit and then attaching the yellow and uh, white wires to the control relays. I like to use these uh, piggyback uh, terminals with the uh, heat shrink on them. That way if this you know ever quit you can unhook it uh, completely from the system but that'll leave you with both the wired pendant working and the uh, remote working. And lastly I'll put in uh, it around here someplace, <coughs> a little bracket and a little uh, toggle switch. It also has a waterproof boot. Uh, these receivers do pull a slight amount of power even when they're shut off and also <clears throat> when you're not using the trailer if you have that shut off or if you're driving whatever that way uh, nothing could accidentally trip either the uh, <clears throat> you know if you put a hydraulic jack on it you wouldn't want that coming down going down the road and you certainly wouldn't want the bed raising so it'd be a good idea to have a way to uh, <clears throat> shut off the wireless uh, receiver so We'll get that wired up and see what it looks like. So there's what that looks like. Uh, it's got heat shrink I need to pull down. So now I've got a uh, white wire is hot when the uh, retract the cylinder button is pressed. The yellow button is hot when the extend button is pressed. And this uh, blue wire is hot when either of these two are active, but they don't cross feed. So when the white wire is hot, the blue wire is hot, the yellow is not. When the yellow wire is hot, the blue wire is also hot, and the white wire is not. So I'll shove these uh, heat shrink tubes down over it, then I've got a big piece of heat shrink tube to come up from the bottom over all uh, both of these diodes and uh, seal it up. And then it'll be a matter of uh, taking it out to the trailer and wiring it up. The up and down will each get a uh, piggyback spade connector and the blue wire for the solenoid on the motor will get a ring terminal and uh, that should do it. So a quick shot of how this turned out. I mounted my switch on a piece of aluminum and labeled it with a stainless uh, nylock nut there and there's the remote. The antenna sticking out. Everything's all in uh, heat shrink and split mode. You'll know if I worked on your stuff because everything is heat shrinked and labeled. So there's the remote to trip the pump. The yellow is the remote for extend. And the white, which is labeled back here, is the remote for retract. Uh, inline fuse, I went ahead and just uh, Rather than attach by the battery where you get corrosion, I decided to attach on the other end of the battery lead. And then the same thing where this uh, negative cable comes to uh, the pump. I just uh, put my negative there for the remote. So I'll put that on the rubber remote. And And then when you don't want to use it, you don't have the parasitic draw of the receiver, and that way nobody can accidentally activate the trailer. And then, of course, the uh, factory fob is still active, too, if you choose to use that.